so now we are at WWE T L C and chairs. And stairs. It's already a really dumb name for a pay-per-view. It's already a really dumb idea for a pay-per-view. Because there's a match type called TLC where tables, ladders, and chairs are all legal to try to get to something hanging above the ring. So now you've based an entire pay-per-view around the one match. And the funny thing about this is there's only one of those matches happening. It's just a really weird thing that they did. But essentially we're having a chairs match, a ladders match, a tables match, a stairs match. I don't know what the fuck that is, but uh, I'm going to make it up later. And a TLC match. And only one title is on the line tonight. Or no, two titles. Three titles. Four titles. But not the WWE Championship. For the fourth consecutive pay-per-view in a row, there's still no WWE Champion to be seen. Which is odd. Because I distinctly remember when Daniel Bryan got hurt, there was a some kind of weird fucking 30 day rule where they had to defend the championship every 30 days, otherwise they get stripped. We're going on day fucking like 120. Brock Lesnar still hasn't defended this piece of shit belt. Just saying, WWE, you just brought that fuck, you just brought that shit up fucking months ago. Whatever. Whatever. So now we have this pay-per-view. Um, this, again, just going to be a fantasy booking. I don't know what their logic with anything is. Just having old people randomly come in and beat, beat up other old people. Because that's what... Because that's what matters. That last week. Yeah. So... Let's just run down it. Let's just run it down. So I'm going down this match in no particular order. Um, giving my quick what I think should happen or what I think is probable to happen, maybe. Uh, with our kickoff match, we have The New Day, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Big E versus the team of Gold and Stardust, what they refer to as the Dust Brothers, which infers that their last name is Dust. Um, now the New Day is brought about because Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Big E are, were doing nothing at the time except for losing matches. So they decided to put all three of these black dudes in a, in a stable together. And at the time, WWE is kind of under fire for being a bit of racists because no black guy has really ever won their biggest championship. I mean, you can say The Rock, but that's the, that's like saying Barack Obama's black. Meh. That's kind of what I'm saying. So they have all these allegations going on. So then they're like, alright, well, we'll make this stable. And then they come out and they're like, and uh, Xavier Woods like, we're tired of having, you know, having opportunities handed to other people. This is our day, this is our time, it's now. And then WWE's like, you know what? Nah. They got rid of it. The sec like it didn't last two weeks and they was gone. So they're like, we just don't want to make it seem like we're giving in to pressure to make black superstars when we're being called racist. Whatever, dude. Not my company. So then they came back, and the whole thing was, the, not only were they saying like, oh, you don't make like you don't make black guys your champion. You also give all the black people and all the Mexican people and all the Chinese people really stereotypical racist gimmicks. So like a like a fucking Ru like Rusev, his gimmick is that he is Russian and that he does not like America. There is uh like our truth. He's black, he dances and he raps. A little racist. Um Kamala, guy you probably don't know. Essentially, is he is black and he is from Africa, so he is like 
Like one of those guys like, like, oh, my dick. My feet. Paint my face up really weird. And wear a grass skirt. Like, like Kofi Kings, when we first started, he had to be Jamaican. Like, completely Jamaican. Because that's what black people are. They're all like, they're all Africans and they rap and they dance. And it's just really, like, it's just really, you know, you notice this kind of thing. You notice this trend. So they were like, all right, well, we'll have a, when we when they started this fashion, they were like, all right, well, we'll have them. And the whole thing is that they want to break the mold. They want to show that they are smart, athletic friends and that they're they're here to make serious business. Oh, wait, what? We're being called racist for not pushing black people right? Don't push these guys. We don't want to look like we're giving into peer pressure. Let's push them a year from now. So now they're getting a push. And their push is, their gimmick is, that they are black guys who love to dance and have fun, and they also kind of have a preachery, gospel-y gimmick to them. And they debuted on Black Friday, so tee hee hee. But they always say this. Michael Cole always says the stupidest fucking thing. Like, whatever the good guy is, it's always, ha ha ha, good guy number one loves to have fun. So there would, he'd be like, the New Day loves to have fun, or Seamus loves to have fun. It's like, who doesn't like having fucking fun? Do you think there's somebody out there, I mean, aside from Grumpy Cat, who just sits around going, fuck it, god damn it, having fun. Mm, I hate having fun. Shut the fuck up, Cole, you idiot. Anyway, they do this thing where there's three guys, and they always have tag team matches against two people. So how do they do it? They go rock, paper, scissors. And whoever, like, has the same thing, so, like, if two, so, like, whoever holds up the same two symbols, they're the ones that are going to have the tag match. So, you know, makes sense. Um, so if I was booking this with my amazing powers of uh, being perfect and knowing exactly what I'm talking about always, uh, having excellent business savvy for marketability and all that jazz. What I want to have happen is once, twice, shoot. And it's Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods in a match against the Dust Brothers. And, you know, you have a good competitive match because all five of these guys are really good. They're all excellent performers. You have a really good match, and it gets to the point where you're having your, you know, your hullabaloo of finishers where this guy hits his finisher, and this guy hits his finisher, and this guy knocks this guy out of the ring, and this guy does this. And it gets to the point where it's about to happen, and then all of a sudden the lights go out, and all of a sudden you hear, and the ascension comes out. Remember those guys? The Yaw guys? Yeah, they come out, and they're like, what the fuck is this? And those guys walk over and Big E's like, what the fuck you got? And then they kick the shit out of Big E. And, like, Kofi Kingston, whoever's in the ring, is like, what the fuck are you doing? And uh, Goldust or Stardust turns around really quick and hits their finisher on him, wins the match, one, two, three, and they fucking get the fuck out of there. Goldust Stardust run. They're like, fuck this. And then uh, they grab up Xavier Woods or whoever's on the outside beside Big E, and they fucking beat the shit out of him. And then they get in the ring, and whoever got the fi ate their finisher and took the pinfall, like, they're sizing up for the fall of man, which is a really fucking cool move where the uh, the target is in the center of the ring, and they each stand on opposite sides of the corners. So then they just sit there and they just like see like, come up you motherfucker, get the fuck up you motherfucker, and then like the whole crowd goes yeah 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 at least if it's NXT, and then as soon as that guy gets up all the way, they both fucking tear ass and they fucking haul out they sprint at this dude who's sitting in the center. And one guy goes low and, like, kicks the legs after another, and the other guy jumps in the air and punches him in the face. So this person gets turned inside out and tastes their fucking asshole. So that's why I want to see happen. Like, and I'm sorry, because the New Day just started, and I like all three of those guys, but they have a terrible, terrible burden put on their shoulders where it's like, <laughs> these three guys love to have fun. <laughs> it's just... No, nope, I don't want it. Don't want it. So have them get the shit beat out of them here. And then the next, well, over the next couple of weeks, the Ascension are just like rocking these three dudes until the until the next pay-per-view where it's a three-on-one handicap, on a three-on-two handicap match, and they still win, uh, mostly due to shenanigans based on something or other. And then you can have 
them turn heel and say, I'm sick. Like, this is, this is what the fucking corporate guys wanted. They wanted us to be happy and shuck and jive for you guys, and we wanted to be fucking serious. But we tried to play it their way, try to get somewhere. Obviously, that didn't work, so fuck it. We're not playing by any else's rules except for ours. This is our time. This is a new day. A new, new day. We're going to be fucking mean. And cool. Now you have people that actually like the New Day because they have some kind of actual edge to them. We have the Ascension here, and the Ascension are fucking awesome. And right on. Next we have our ladders match with Luke Harper and Dolph Ziggler. The worst and best thing I can say is I don't care who wins. Mostly because I just want to see this match because it's going to be a really good match. It's a ladders match. Dolph Ziggler's good at ladders matches. I'm really high on... Luke Harper, he's a really good performer for being his size, and I think no matter who wins, which I think it should be Luke Harper, just he just won the belt, so he should keep it for a while. And they should just have a really good match. I'm, I'm looking forward to that match. All right, Luke Harper versus or no shit. All right, all right, Eric Rowan versus The Big Show in a stairs match. I don't know what that means. I have no idea what a stairs match is. If I had to assume, I think it's a match where only stairs are legal, but with WWE, it's an all or nothing rule, where either all the rules are allowed or none of the rules are allowed. Like with their Fatal 4, I mean, with their uh, False Count Anywhere matches. All that's supposed to mean is that you can pin somebody in the outside of the ring. That's all that's supposed to mean. But whenever they say, it doesn't matter where you pin them. It actually means doesn't no rules at all. Fuck all the rules. Or if there's a no holds barred. No holds barred does not mean you can hit someone with a chair. That means you can choke somebody. You can pull their hair. You can like fucking pull on the fucking individual fingers. Like no holds. You cannot. The ref cannot tell you you're not allowed to hold them. Like like do that hold. That does not mean you can grab a fucking chair and crack them over the skull with it but they don't see the difference. So, normally with a stairs match, I would imagine it just means each person gets handed a set of fucking steel stairs and get to hit each other with it. But if I was the person that was making this shit up, and you know I'm a good one at this, you, set, you stack up a bunch of chair, I'm stairs in the ring, and then each person stands on one, and they just punch each other until one person falls all the way off the stairs, like all the way down the stairs, and dies. And that's your stairs match. Eric Rowan wins. The Tag Team Championship match with Damien Mizdow in The Miz versus The Usos. It's going to be a good match. I hope uh, they continue this shtick of Mizdow being cheered while The Miz is booed. Because they do this fucking thing where it's like, uh, it's like Spongebob at, uh, on the talent show episode of... Spongebob, where Squidward, like, poke his head out and do the exact same thing that Spongebob's doing, except they boo Squidward and cheer Spongebob. So the Miz will be like, hey! And since, and the crowd will be like, fuck you! And since Mizdow is, uh, the Miz's stunt double, he has to do the same thing, because that's how that works. He goes, hey! And the crowd goes, fuck yeah, it's Mizdow! Because Mizdow's whole thing is that he wrestles an invisible person while the Miz is fighting. So, like, the Miz will be sitting there, like, have someone in a headlock, and the and Miz doll will just be on the outside going, Yeah! It's just, it's goofy shit. And they won the championships, and Miz took both the tag team belts and is holding them. Like, he's holding both of the championship belts. So Miz doll was like, well, I'm supposed to have one. So, fuck. So he went out and he bought two kid replica belts. So he's walking around with two plastic belts. It's fucking awesome. Love Miz Dow. I hope he wins. I hope he wins the tag team match. That's what I hope would happen. <sighs> Kane versus Ryback in a chairs match. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. It should mean only chairs are allowed. It's not what it means. It means anything goes. But they're probably going to use chair the most. What I want to see in this match, what I would do, is go, this is a chairs match. There's going to be a chair every square inch of that fucking ring. I'm going to wedge a chair in between each turnbuckle, top and bottom, on all four posts. 
about every two feet on the ring is going to be a chair wedged in between all the ropes. So it's like, you know, rope, 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 and there's a chair there. Uh, there's like chairs, like sat up, like fucking musical chairs all around the ring. There's like chairs, like sat up like musical chairs inside the ring. There's chairs every fucking where. And that way, if you can't move without stubbing your fucking toe on a goddamn steel chair. Like chairs. Make this a chairs match with chairs. I want to end with Ryback making a big pile of fucking chairs and hitting his big shell shock move onto Kane, onto this big fuck off pile of stairs, and like kills him. Or chairs, whatever. I want this to have chairs. Lots of chairs. End with chairs. Chairs match. Nikki Bella versus AJ Lee. Nikki Bella's gonna win due to shenanigans. Next. Rusev versus Jack Swagger. Uh, what I would do is have these guys literally kick the absolute piss out of each other. Like, make this like a seething, boiling rivalry because right now it does not matter. Rusev, like, is complete out, completely outclasses Jack Swagger because he's beat him twice at pay-per-views. So Swagger really has, like, nothing on him. So I just really want to see, like, him just have, like, a fucking fire under his ass and just try to... Throw fucking nuclear bombs at Rusev. Try to bomb this fucking Russian, and still not come up with a win, because I don't see him win. But if you can make them like fucking furious, anger, and almighty vengeance, might be able to turn this into a cool match. Bray Wyatt versus Dean Ambrose in a table slabs and chairs match. Silly match. Bray Wyatt, I hope win. But Dean Ambrose also needs a win. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to reach for because the table's ladder and chairs match. It's supposed to be something you're supposed to grab, but there's nothing up there, so it just means you're going to be able to use any kind of weapon, which why don't you just call it a hardcore match? I don't know. But, uh, cool. Uh, this match is going to be cool. I would have Bray Wyatt win because he desperately needs some kind of momentum going his way. Uh, lots of crazy spots for Dean Ambrose and them to do because these guys are both fucking insane. So, look for that. And then, the last thing, Seth Rollins, John Cena, tables match. John Cena loses, doesn't get his uh, number one contenders match for his, for uh, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Brock Lesnar. I hope Seth Rollins wins. I really want him to win, but he's not going to win. Because I thought he was gonna. Because it wouldn't make sense to have somebody who's actually gaining momentum to lose. But then I remembered he's fucking fighting John Cena, so he's gonna lose. But I was like, maybe they're not gonna do it. And then they were like, Randy Orton has to come back. So I'm like, fuck, he's gonna lose. Randy Orton's gonna fuck him. He's gonna fuck Seth Rollins. John Cena's gonna fucking throw him through a table. John Cena's gonna go fight Brock Lesnar. Again. Randy Orton's gonna face Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins gonna beat him. But since he just lost like a really important match, not really gonna help many. Because he's gonna be like in the mid middle of the card. So he's not gonna look like he's fucking anything. So if I was fucking booking this shit, Seth Rollins fights the shit out of John Cena. John Cena goes to F you him. He lands on the other side of the table. Insegurs him. He lands flat out on on the table like this with his head just hanging off. Seth Rollins gets on the top rope and curb stomps his entire body through this fucking table and he makes it so he can't win. Here comes and then like he's gonna like do something else really fucking bastardly to John Cena and Randy Orton comes out and makes the save and like fucking RKO's shit out of him through another table and like say, like, yeah, I'm the fucking winner now. That way you can have Seth Rollins have some kind of feud with Randy Orton still, and then you can have John Cena actually have to earn his fucking title shot. This is not going to be as good as NXT TakeOver. Not near as good.